come back they 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 they'll, they'll make it okay then let's begin today we're going to look at building a very simple system we're going to build a system which has a login page a dashboard a registration page so this is the aim of what we want to do we want to build a login page a dashboard and a registration page so our application should have these pages okay in addition to these pages, there are some few things we have to start doing now. So we will start doing them now. And then um, we will build this application from that point on. So let's see how we can build an application like this. Now, our login page is going to have some certain information. Is going to have a username, a password, so that someone can um, log into our application. Our, um, so this information here goes to the login. Are we okay? Okay, so the login will have these pieces of information. The registration, before I go and do that of the dashboard, is going to have registration information. That is to have the person's username and then the password, but also it will have the person's full name and the person's phone number. So that's the information we want to take here. Over here on the dashboard, we want to take in this piece of information. We want to take in a table that will show all the people who have registered. That is to show their full name, username, and it will not show their password. So we want their full name, phone number, and username in a table format. Are we okay? So this is what we want to do today. Okay. Now let's begin. Over here, I've already created a folder. So I'm going into that folder. I called that folder company. So in here, I have a folder here called company. And I'm going to open that. So I've opened my folder here called company. Inside my folder called company, I'll create a folder in it called SRC. And then outside the folder called company, I'll create my index page. I'll create my registration page. I'll create my dashboard. Great. Now, inside the SRC, I'm going to create a folder called connect.php. So, this is the structure of my work. I have three folders. I have one folder inside the SRC folder. So, I can start with the SRC folder. In there, I want to create my PHP tag. And then I want to create a connection to the database. Now, let's look at this carefully, very, very carefully. For me to access the database, I need to know some piece of information. So what are the pieces of information I need to know? I need to know where is the database? So the server that has the database 
where is that server? I need to know what user has access to that server. I need to know what password has access to that server. I also need to know what database I want when I go into that server. So if I don't have these three pieces of information, I cannot access my server. Again, let me repeat. If I want to access my server, I need to know what server do I want to access? I need to know the username of the server. I need to know the password of the username to the server. And then I need to know what database I want to access inside the what server. So these three, these four pieces of information is very important to me. So I'll create variables here. And for each of the variables I've created here, I would assign the values that correspond to them. So for the server, I need to know what is the name of my server. And my server's name is local host. By default, all of us, our username is root until we change it. By default, all of us do not have a password. So I'll just do the double quotes. If I leave a space here, it means the password is space. So it means I'll leave it like this together. Then over here, the name of the database is going to be company. Great. So with this, I have established the variables I need to access the server. But there is a problem. The server is located, oh, sorry, the database is located on the server. So the database is here. And then our application is here. So we need to go and access the data from the database. Now we have the keys to go and access the data from the database. These are the keys that I would need to access the data from the database. So I would need the server name, the username, the password of the user, and the database name. So with these, I can go with my application into the database and access the information in which I desire. But what is going to take these things to the database and then unlock it in the server and pick the data I want? What is going to do that is a keyword called my SQL I. And as you can see, these are various things I can do with my SQL word I. But one important thing I want to do before I can do all of these things is to create a connection. So I want my SQL I underscore connect. Now you can see that my SQL I underscore connect takes four things. It takes the password, the, the local host, the username, the password, and the database name. Of course, if we have the sockets names, then we put them there. But since we are not using sockets, we don't need them. So over here, I need to put in the name of my server in which I have smartly kept inside a variable in this order. So it is this statement here. That is actually going to leave my web application, go to my database, unlock my database, and pick the, sorry, unlock my server and pick the database in which I am looking for. Now, once it does that, I need to know if that has been completed, and I need to know that it has brought the data I am looking for. So I'm going to save all of this in a variable I'm calling what? Connect. That means that anytime I call on connect, I'm calling on the information that has been brought from the database to my application. And this piece of information will be saved inside the SRC word connect.php. Now let me come to my index page. 
my index page, of course, I need to do my HTML tags. I need to do my head tag. Then in here, I'll need to do my title tag. And then in here, I need to put the title of my page, which is company. And here I need to do the body of my application. So body. Now my body here. For all the other pages, I will need it. So I will just copy them onto the dashboard. And then I'll copy them also onto the registration page. Now in here, in the login page, I'll do a H1. Just say, welcome to company. Very simple. And then over here, I will do a table tag just so that I can keep my things in order. I'll do a TR. In here, I'll do a TD. I'll replicate the TDs. And then I'll copy this three times so that I'll have three different row columns. In here, I'll put in some things here. Anyway, I'm doing these things, so I'll be, I'll hurry up a bit, okay? So enter your user name. That's fine. And then over here, I can do, hold on. And then over here, I can do input type text ID username, name value, username, placeholder. There's no need for a placeholder. So I'll just do slash at that. And then over here, this user name. Over here, instead of me using username, I'll use password. And then instead of me using username here, I'll use what? Password. And of course, the type here would be password. Now over here, I will click here and then do input type. Button, name of the button will be submit. Of course, here I want to use it as a submit. So let me just make it submit. And then the value of it would be submit. I'll bring my slash here and close here. I would come and put my entire table in a form tag. and then bring this one in a bit so that we know it's in. Here, the method of the form is going to be post. And then the action of the form is going to go to src slash process.php. Great. That means that I want the information to leave this page, go to a page in SRC called process.php. So I'm here now. So it means that anytime I call on the code, it will come here. Now over here, instead of me doing submit, I'll do login here, the value to be logged in. Great. Great. Now, on my page, when I go to my page, I type in local host company. 
I should see this login form there. Of course, there's a mistake here. So let me correct it and change this one here to what? Password. Okay. Now, this is my login page. So here, just to make it look a bit nicer, I'll just come here, change this one to a P tag and say, please enter details to log in. And then I'll do a HR tag here so that the person can log in. So this is how it looks now. So the person can log in now. Of course, if the person doesn't have the information to log in, then a P tag should be here. Telling the person to click here to log in. So I would wrap this click here to log in. in an A tag. And over here, I'll just say href is equal to registration.php. So again, on my page, when the person is here, click here to log in, doesn't sound right. So I have to change it to click here to create account good so that when the person is over here they will just click here to take him to the registration page to create an account just to save time again i'll copy everything on the login page and paste it on the registration page i would duplicate the first two boxes here and then I would change the information there from username to full name. And then here I'll change it to full name, full name. Over here, I'll change it to text. And then I'll change this place to phone number. And I'll change this to, to phone number. Of course, here has to change to phone number. Great. Over here, instead of login, I'll say sign up. And then over here, I'll change this from registration to login. The information here is click here to login, to stop. Over here, enter details to register. So when I come back here again and I refresh, I should be getting this information for my registration page. Enter full name, that, 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 sign up, click here, takes you to the login page. But there's a problem. Over here, we said our login page is the index page. So this should be index.php. So we are back here. I will refresh this page, click here, and it takes me to the login. If I click here, it takes me to the registration page for me to go and register myself. Now, if I type in the details over here in the registration page and it is correct, then it should take me to the what? Dashboard. Dot PHP. Now, dashboard.php, as we can see, there is nothing there. So I'll go to the dashboard.php. I will just steal these two things here and bring it to the dashboard.php, whereby I have 
And here, instead of enter details, I'll say find registered information below. Of course, I'll do a nice line under it. And over here, I will do a table. Since I have a table here, I'll just go and steal this table and bring it here. I'll remove the rules I have here. Now, instead of this information, I'll have here I N O, or let me just do hash for number. I'll change this to full name. I'll change this information here from this to phone number. I'll change this information here from this to user name. And then over here, I'll do action. Of course, I'll copy this, paste it here, paste it here. Okay, let me just paste it once so that I can remove the information that is in here. Great. And then let me just paste this one more so that we we'll have a visual of how it looks like. So again, if I refresh the dashboard, I should have this. But in the dashboard's case, I want the border lines of my table to show, so I'll make it one. So now the border lines of my table can show. And we can see that we have information inside the table. Wonderful. So the idea is this. If someone is here, they can't log in, they'll click here, create an account. If they create an account and then they come back to the login and log in, it will take them to the dashboard. And once they are in the dashboard, they can see everybody who has registered in the organization. We've set up the views in which we want. Now we must write the code for them to work. The first thing we will do is we will start with the registration page because of course you would have to register. Now in here, we can see that we have full name, phone number, username, password. That means that in our database, and we did that last week where we went to localhost PHP my admin. We will have to go and create a database. For the database. So over here, where is it? I'll click new. I'll type in company. That's the name of my database. Over here, my table name is going to be info, registered info. Or let me see, registration info. Okay. I'll click create. And then in here, I'll start. The first thing I'll have is my ID column that I'll call log. I'll go and make sure it's an auto increment. Then here I have my full name. Over here I have my phone number. Over here I have my username. I'll add two more columns for me to have my password section 
And then over here, I would have my date reg for date of registration. In here, I'll go and choose date and time for the date reg. For password, I will go and choose text. Username, I'll go and choose VACA and I will choose 40. Phone number, I'll choose VACA and choose 15. Full name, I'll choose VACA and choose 60. And over here, it is an int, so there's no need for me to type in here. When I'm done, I'll click on save. Now I've saved it. Are we okay? Now, going on, moving through what we are doing, I have my database set up now. So now, how do I push the information here into the database over here? Let's come back here. In the code, we said that when you're at the registration page, your information should be sent to process.php. So in process.php, I must make arrangements for the data that is coming. So in here, I will begin and ask a question. If, into bracket, so I need my PHP tags. If into bracket is set into bracket dollar sign underscore post square brackets that in here I'll put on put in registration. Then I can do the code that is in here. So here, let me make a quick modification here. Instead of the name here being submit, I'll make the name registration. So when I submit my form, it will check if registration here has been set and load all the data I have in over here. The data would be loaded in based on the names I have here. So here I have in full name, which will be equal to dollar sign underscore post, full name. I have phone number as the name section, right? And we've done that. So now we know why that is there. Dollar sign underscore post, that. We have username. We have dollar sign username is equal to dollar sign underscore post square brackets single quotes username and then finally we have password so here we have dollar sign password being equal to dollar sign underscore post Password. Great. Now, where do we go from here? What is the next direction we go from here? From here, I need to prepare my SQL statement. I need to prepare the statement that will take the data I have into the database. So I need a variable that will hold that. And SQL, as we saw the other time, for me to insert data, I need the keyword insert. Then I need the other keyword into. I need to write the name of the table I wanted to insert into. The name of the table is registration info. Remember, we created that table over here and we called it registration what? Info is here. So 
that name is the name of the table I want to insert my information into. Then what are the names of the fields I want to insert my information into? So the name of the fields are full name, phone number, password. So these fields are what I want to insert into full name, phone number, username, password. So the next part of my SQL statement is the keyword values. So these are the values I want to insert. And luckily for me, I have already grouped them already into variables. So I want in double quotes, don't forget the double quotes, the single double quotes, very important. So in singular double quotes, I have username, I have phone, phone number, I have that, and finally I have what? Password. Great. So now I have prepared the SQL statement that will go and put data into my database for me. Let's see if what I have done is true. If I bring the echo word here, so I type in echo here to display this statement on my screen, and I come over here, I type in here, John Sam. I type the phone number that. I type in the username that, that. I type in the password that, and I submit. It takes me to process, oh, sorry. It takes me to process, but I didn't show the information I was expecting. That means I have an error somewhere. So let's come back here. Did I save the screen I did? Everything is saved? Yes, sir. The, the, the error is that you didn't close the brackets. Which bracket? Uh, oh, OK. I think I see it. Which bracket? In connect. In connect. Uh, that's it right there. Uh, OK, yeah. I see it. I see the brackets now. Sorry. Yeah, over here. I see, it's I see closed. The uh -huh. Yeah. It's closed. Okay. OK. So that's not the error. I think the error is that I forgot to refresh my page before I did it because I made some changes in the registration page. So it's my mistake, okay? So I have this information here. Let me see, John Sam. Over here, his username will be John Sam, as one word. And the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So sign up, and as you can see, the data there is showing. Let's see how it will be written for us. So we have our insert into registration info, the fields we want, and then the variables. You can see that the double quote is there, right? And then the variables will fix the information where we want them for us. Can we see that? Yes, sir. Beautifully yes. done. So now I can copy the statement here. When I bring it into the database and I run it directly from here and I press go here, you can see that it inserts the data into the database for me. So when I click on browse, that data has been loaded here. So it means our SQL statement is correct, it's working. There's nothing wrong with our SQL statement. The problem is that we don't want to come and copy the thing from here and go and put it inside our SQL statement. That's not that's not what we want. We want the information to leave here and go into the database automatically. So I will tell the computer to do some certain things. And what are these things it should do? Number one, it should take my SQL statement and go and put it inside the database and run it. Now, how will I do that? I need to use the keyword my SQLI underscore query. Now, this statement takes two things. The first thing it takes is the connection we created into the database. So that connection, it needs that. 
The second thing in which it needs is your SQL statement in which we have already prepared and put it in a variable called what? SQL. So now we have these two statements. But what's the problem? The problem is the connection we created, we have put a variable here, but that piece of information is inside the connect.php. So it means we need to find a way to tell the computer that it should bring the information in information that we have here in connect.php into the process.php in which we have here. How will it do this? It will do this using include, and we are going to tell the computer to include the file connect. And my connect, I spelled it wrongly. Let me correct it. Dot what? PHP. So over here, I spelled it with three ends. So let me just remove one of them. So now it's correct. Note that I didn't add the SRC because the process and the connect are in the same folder inside the SRC. So there's no need for me to add the SRC link again. So now this entire page here would be included on this page. Remember it is PHP code. So it has to be inside the PHP word tag. That means that all the code here would be included inside my page. So all of this thing here will be brought here automatically because of the word I use here, which is what? Include. So I'm including this document in this page. Wonderful. Now, over here again, when this statement runs, this is either going to tell me that it has, been, it has achieved this missing or it has not. It's going to give me a true or a false. Hence, here I need to bring in result, a variable, and make it equal to that. So that if the result is true, then I can relocate from this page and go back to my index page. So header into double quote location, leave this page and go and look for index.php. And when you find index, look for a variable called E and make E equal to successful. Other than that, else, take me to the index page again. Oh, sorry. This is the registration. So take me to the registration page, rather. So here is also going to be registration. And tell me that it was what? Unsuccessful. Let's see if this works. So if I come back to my page here. I come here, I am here, I type in the password again. Let me, yeah, I've already deleted it from here. So sign up and you can see I am here. At the top here, we can see, let me just copy this and bring it to the code. And we can see that it takes me to the registration page and E is what? Successful. That means I've been able to put my data in my database. When I check my database and I click on browse, the data is there. You can see that this is the second one, which is the first one I deleted. So this is the second piece of data. The data has been loaded over there for me. But my dates here are all showing me nothing. So I have to fix that. So as part of the things that it should load, it should also load date reg. And the date reg is going to equal to a variable I'm going to call date. And then I'll tell the computer to just go and pick for me the current date of my computer or whatever computer the person is using. And that is a date format in which you would have to learn of head. So here I have year, hyphen, month, hyphen, day, hours, minutes, and then what? Second. Mm -hmm. 
So over here, I'll just have to bring a comma here and then single quotes and add what? Date. Let's test this and see if it works again. So I'm back here. I will type in a new user. So Fred Kumson. Phone number is that? Pass. Oh, I said phone number is phone number. Sorry. Password. Username is Query. Password is also what? Query. It's successful. I come and check browse. I can see that now my date is no more 111, but my date format. So it means my data is going into the database. But the user is not always going to look at the URL to know that it is successful or what, unsuccessful. So let's fix that and come to the registration page. Now at the top of the registration page, I'm going to tell the computer to create for me a P tag of style, color, red. And also create for me a P tag of color green. Now I'm going to introduce a PHP tag over here and say if into bracket is set. And we know what that is set is for. So dollar sign underscore get into square brackets E. Then I am supposed to do the following things. If E is equal to successful, then I am supposed to do something. So if dollar sign E sorry, is successful, then I'm supposed to do something. Else, I'm supposed to do something else. So what am I supposed to do if E is successful? I'm supposed to echo out this entire statement over here. So I'll put it in single quotes and put it over here. And then in here, I will type U so um, registration process good now if it is the opposite case oh sorry here is supposed to be green successful so green then unsuccessful then we'll make it what red so if it is else then here is going to be red and this will be registration unsuccessful so these two things can go away now because we've already used them. And then on our screen, remember after every statement, we have a semicolon. So I've done that. On our screen, if I refresh, it will tell me registration was successful. So that the person will get the feedback. So here, if I come in here, fresh, because of the is set E, there will be no error here because E is not there. Now, when I type in a person's information over here, and I submit, it will tell me that the registration is what? Successful. When I check the DB, that information is going to be what? There. So information registered, on my screen, it is telling me that the information is successful. I am using the gets and I'm using the post to deliver messages. Because the get is not important, you can see that I can put it in here and then transfer data with it so that I can give feedback. The user does not know that he has left this page and gone and then come back. Everything is controlled. Everything is well done. The screen looks good. Everything is moving very, very well. Great, perfectly. Are there any questions?
Yes, sir. Please, the, the code you just wrote about um, uh, E and uh, using the get method. Uh-huh. Uh uh-huh. So I was, I was, I was trying to reference from um, what else I had to put after the else um, uh, uh, type. So, uh, so at where 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 I will place this is where I'd want the 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 uh, user or the visitor or the to the, see the, the message to. So if I take this code then, out of here, um, if I want them yes to see the message. I would place it in that. Yes, and I put it down here. It means that when I refresh the page, the user is going to see that message down here. But as you can see, if the message is down there, it doesn't really make any sense because the person will not be wait, like whenever you get an error message, you would go to the top. Do you, do you understand? So it makes sense that I put this error message at the what the top. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yes. So where you want the message to appear is where you put that piece of code. So we are done with the login, the registration. Let's move to the login. Are we okay? Yeah. Now, in the login, we want to transfer this information also to process.php. Now, over there, I'm going to say that the name of my submit button is going to be login. So that. When the user comes to process.php, I will check if post is set is what? Login. So if it is login, then we we'll come to this section here. But if it is registration, then we'll come to this section here. In here too, I want to go and take the username and password information the user has what type. Here too, I want to also create my SQL statement. But in this case, my SQL statement is going to select for me. So I need the SQL statement select. And I am selecting everything from the table called registration info. But here is the key point. You have selected everything. Where the username of the person is equal to the username we have here. And the password of the person is equal to the password the user was typed. Finish. Hi, sir. Um, I wanted to ask. Uh, uh... I've seen in SQL injection how somebody can can kind of like alter the code or manipulate the code to mm -hmm. in this section to to make it so that they can bypass the the the, the command here and then go into the um, uh, a dashboard or the interface. Is there a way to uh, maybe uh, fix that? Issue? Yes, there's a way. You can use you can use escape numbers and then you can use filters but before we get there it is best we know how to do it then we can add the filters and things over here if you start doing those things now you get overwhelmed is that okay yes sir so now here we have the information we require. 
The next step is to go and then send this information to the database. Of course, remember our perfect statements we had when we did it for the registration, which is MySQL query, the connection to the database we called connect, and then the SQL statements we have over here. Now, in this case, I'm not just checking if the information went, because that, that would do nothing for me. But I want to know if the information brought back a row. And why is bringing back a row important? Because if it is able to find a row, then it has been able to find a particular user. If it finds no row, then it means there was no user found. So in this case, again, here, I want to collect the roles that it was collected. And I'll use the keyword MySQL underscore num underscore roles. And num underscore roles take, takes the information you brought back. That is the, the information we are keeping in result. So this will tell us that if roles is greater than zero, then it means that we have found somebody. Someone has been found. So we want to redirect the user from this page onto the what? Dashboard, because you have been successfully logged in. So go to the dashboard and enjoy your life over there. Now, if it is anything less than zero or zero, then we have not been able to log in. So for you, we want to redirect you to the back to the index page. And if you go back to the index page, we want to go with the message on success for. So over here, I'm back here. I want to make the modifications here again. I've already done them here. So I can just copy the code from here and then come and paste it over here. But I can't say registration for successful or registration as successful. I have to use login successful and login Unsuccessful, incorrect username or end slash or password. Save. So let's see how this will work. So over here in this page, I'll click on login. I am here. I will type in my login information, let's say that, and then let's say that. This is wrong. So I'm supposed to get registration what? Unsuccessful. But the page it is taking me to is wrong. So let's go back. Let's come back here into the process. We said it should go to dashboard and index. But as we can see, index and dashboard are outside the SRC folder. So I need to tell the computer to leave the folder it is in. And I also have to tell it to leave the folder that is in over here. And then go and look for this. So with this modifications, I can now do my testing. So here I have this and I have that. I log in. It is unsuccessful. But it is telling me here that login is what? Successful. So let's go back here and check. Over here, I made a fundamental mistake. Instead of me using two equal tools, I used only one. So that is why I have an error there. So I'm supposed to use two equal tools. I refresh here, and it gives me the me proper messaging now. Login unsuccessful, incorrect username and or password. So let me come back here. Let me remove this S from here. 
And then over here, since it's an exclamation mark, it's like a full stop, I have to bring a capital in the incorrect. So I'm here. Again, I refresh. So incorrect password. But what happens if my password or username is correct? So over here, I have Kweti Kweti. So I have Kweti here, Kweti here. And I can log in. And that's still telling me I have an incorrect username and password. Let's test again. So Kweti, Kweti, log in. And as you can see, it has moved me beautifully to what? The dashboard. So I have done registration so I can register somebody and then I can use the login to also go and check the database and see if that person is there or not. Next week, when we come, we'll see how we can bring information here. We can do delete, we can do update, and then we would close off by now building an entire application whereby someone can log in, register, make some payments, buy some goods, so on and so forth. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, small question. Uh, for the um, assignment that you want us to do, uh, did you want us to pres still present today, or because I, I have I finished my assignment, but there's a small small issue that uh, that I, I was having. Maybe but today able it will not be to... possible because okay. most of you are not here, as you can see. So if I let you submit it today, I think it will be a bit unfair. But next week, I'm oh. sure everybody will come. So when everybody comes next week, then we use an hour to present it. Then we'll continue our lecture for the next two hours. Okay. Okay, no problem, sir. Thank you. Remind me of the assignments again. Because I think there are two you have to submit, right? Uh no, it's just it's just one so far. Uh, the assignment is to create a um a, a page where somebody can make an order and then theme it around Bluecrest. Ah yes yes yes. yes make yes. A, a food, food order. order and then food order. Yeah. Okay, no problem. So let's do that and then we will submit it next week. Are we okay? Sure, no problem, sir. Thank you. Sure. This video would be in your class group. I'm sorry that the last week I thought I'd sent it. That's why I came here. But I'll make sure it's in your class group by end of day today, the moment the class is done. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you all for coming. The moment you get the video, I expect you to redo everything again. And then when we come next week, we'll continue from here using this same application. Are we okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you so much for coming again. We'll meet again next week. Bye-bye. Bye, sir.